Hello, I'm Timothy Brussell and I'm here with my Math 1324 class and today we're going to start looking at linear programming and in order to do that we need to recall how to graph a system of linear inequalities in two variables. So here's the problem 2x minus 5y is less than or equal to 10 x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8 and notice these last two constraints x greater than or equal to 0 and y greater than or equal to 0. These last two are called non-negativity uh, inequalities or non-negativity constraints. That's another term that I'm using. Inequalities, I'll be referring to the inequalities as constraints. So that's one of those terms you better, uh, that you should get uh, uh, in your head because it just means an inequality. To solve what we're looking for, we're looking for all the ordered pairs that satisfy every one of these constraints. So, for example, something like 10, 10. If we plug in 10 for x and 10 for y, does the left side turn out to be less than or equal to 10? Uh, but we're looking for all the ordered pairs on the xy grid that will make every one of these things true. The first thing we'll do, we're going to graph. 2x minus 5y is less than or equal to 10. To graph that inequality, the first thing you do is you graph a boundary line. 2x minus 5y equals 10. Pretend instead of a less than or equal to, you just had an equal to. That's a line. We're going to graph the line just by finding intercepts. Plug in 0 for x, then plug in 0 for y. Plug it in 0 for x. You'll have a 0 minus 5y equals 10. So plug it in 0 for x. Negative 5y equals 10. What does y need to equal? Okay, I agree. Now plug in 0 for y. So you'd have a 2x equals 10. So x is 5. I'm going to go ahead and make the boundary line for the next inequality as well, okay? So, there, I'm just separating my work. That's not a big divided by symbol. x plus 2y is less than or equal to 8. The boundary line is x plus 2y equals 8. And we'll find our intercepts. When x is 0, what's y? 4, that would be a 2y equals 8, so y is 4. <coughs> when y is 0, what's x? 8. Eight. So, I'm going to come up here to my, or go down here to my graph paper, and I'll draw my xy grid. Mm, let's see here. And we'll graph the first boundary line. 0, negative 2, left, right, 0, down 2, and then 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When graphing the boundary lines, you have to ask yourself, do the points on the line satisfy the inequality? And there's equality there. So yes, if your inequality is a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, your boundary line is a solid mark. Suppose it's just a less than or a greater than. There's no equal to. Does anyone recall from high school or previous math classes how you make the line? Suppose there weren't that equal to. The points don't satisfy the inequality, so in that event, if your inequality is just a less than or a greater than, you're going to make the boundary line dotted. If it's just less than or greater than, the boundary line is dotted, y'all, or dashed. I guess people use dashes. Y'all recall that somewhere or another? Yes, okay. 
here's another thing. With the linear programming, the inequalities must always include equality. So you should ever have any dotted or dashed uh, boundary lines. They should all be solid marks. So we graph the first line. Now we have to decide. Here's the purple line. One side of the purple line contains all the points that make the inequality true. The other one contains all the points that make the inequality false. So you have to decide, well, which side uh, contains the points that make it true. To do that, you choose a point that's not on the purple line. Uh, what order of pair do you think is easy for me to use? I'm going to choose an ordered pair that's not on this purple line. What point do you think I'll use? Zero, zero, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to test zero, zero. For testing it in the purple inequality, two times zero minus five times zero, is that less than or equal to ten? That says zero is less than or equal to ten. True or false? True. So we now shade the side that's above or uh, that contains the test point zero zero so that's this region up here now remember I said my final shaded region would only be had to be the uh, ordered pairs at x greater than or equal to zero and y greater than or equal to zero which quadrant would satisfy those non-negativity inequalities one. quadrant one so these non-negativity constraints are uh, the algebraic, algebraic way of saying only shade the region in quadrant one. So I'm going to shade the region in quadrant one. That's this region right out here. Okay. Now let's graph the second inequality, the red inequality. We have 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, right there, and 8, 0, 7, 8, right there. Once again, there's equality on the inequality, so it's a solid mark. For linear programming, you're always going to have equality, but when you saw these systems of linear inequalities in previous uh, math classes, you probably would have had some that just had less than or greater than. Yes? Um, wouldn't, is that backwards? Or am I confused? Uh, wouldn't the first I don't think so. XBA, no, if uh, uh, X is 8, Y is 0. When Y is 0, X is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. No, I think that's right. Which region's going to be shaded this time? Choose a point that's not on the rest red line and test the inequality. What do you think I'll test? I'm going to choose a point that's not on this red line. I could test 50 million, 50 million, but we want something that's easy to test. What do you think I'll test? If my if my boundary line does not pass through the origin, that's the thing I'm going to test. I'll test the origin. So that says 0 plus 2 times 0 is less than or equal to 8. 0 is less than 8, true or false? It's another true situation. So now I shade, here's my test point. I have to shade the side that contains that test point. So which region would have been shaded twice? I'd shade below here. But this little triangle there, would that have been shaded both times? No. What region would have been shaded twice? I think it's this little bounded quadrilateral right here. The little bounded four-sided region. This stuff out here, would it have been shaded both times? That little triangle there, would it have been shaded both times? and we're restricted to the first quadrant. The shaded region is referred to as the feasible region. So this shaded region is called the feasible 
region. Every ordered pair in that shaded region satisfies my two inequalities as well as my non-negativity constraints. A feasible region in this nature, one that's closed on all sides by uh, solid lines, notice it doesn't keep going forever in any given direction, this thing is said to be closed and bounded. Closed and bounded. And I'll say it's a closed, bounded, feasible region. Those are the nicest of all feasible regions. Any questions there? 